Almighty God, we pray for your blessing upon this council. Help and prosper its work for the advancement and benefit of its people, so that peace and happiness, unity and justice may be established amongst us all. Amen. Please be seated. Manningham City Council acknowledges the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of the land we now know as Manningham. We pay our respects to Wurundjeri elders past and present and value the ongoing contribution to the cultural heritage of Manningham. Council would also like to acknowledge the contribution made to Manningham over the years by people of diverse backgrounds and cultures. I welcome all members of the public here tonight to this special council meeting who have come along to observe proceedings. I'd like to advise those present that tonight's meeting is being audio and video recorded. All care will be taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the gallery, it is assumed your consent is given in the event that your voice and or your image is broadcast. All council meetings are governed by a meeting procedure local law. I will introduce each item of business as listed on the agenda, calling it by number and by reading the title. I will then call for a mover and a seconder of a motion on the item before opening any debate. Only councillors are able to join the debate in an, on an item. Councillors may adopt the officer's recommendation in the report or propose amendments and supplementary motions. I'd like to draw your attention to item four on tonight's agenda, public question time, which provides people with an opportunity to ask questions of the council. Questions registered prior to the commencement of the meeting may be asked. If we do not have the information at hand to provide a meaningful response, the question may be taken on notice and a response provided in writing. I will deal with a maximum of two questions per person and two questions on any one issue. If you have more than two questions, please submit these additional questions in writing to council through the normal channels. Item number two, apologies and requests for leave of absence. There is one apology, Councillor Michelle Kleinert. Item number three, prior notifications of conflict of interest. There are no notifications of conflict of interest. Item number four, public question time. We do have a question from Marlene Pelzoppo, oh, thank you. Uh, so, Ms Pelzoppo, could you please come to the microphone? Thank you. Okay. Um, now, Ms Pelzoppo, you, you have up to two minutes to introduce your question and then ask your question if you... All right. Good evening, everybody. I've been a resident of Manningham Council for 44 years and taught in the Catholic school at Our Lady of the Pines, Donvale, for 26 years. I'm really, really concerned about the damage that's going to happen to Kim Close and Greenway Street. I'm really riled up about it. And uh, it's the first time I've been to Council. It's the house owners, I'm not sure how many are going to be affected, but my husband worked for Ellen Lennox Motors, the Mercedes-Benz workshop in Greenway, in Kim Close, for just on 20 years. Ellen Lennox owns the building, like many of the owners in that precinct, and um, Marcello, I don't know his surname, is one of the new owners in the current business. Ellen is now retired. But today I was prompted to come here when I read David Monk's description of how he's going to lose his building. And in the paper, it really touched me. I read the local paper from cover to cover each week. And I love Manningham Council. Um, but I'm 71 years, so I've been here. I've got less years than I've had more years here on God's earth. And I really feel it's not fair. So I just hope... Um, a lot can be done. Give money, you say you're going to give money to these people, how does it compensate? You give mo money to the owners of these factories, how are the employees going to get work? My husband's been speaking to Alan Lennox and Marcello and they said if they have to find other areas, maybe West Heidelberg, I think they said in the local paper once, and maybe over Blackburn Way. 
I know it was West Heidelberg was mentioned, but I just think it's horrible. You know, it's their livelihood. And um, anyhow, that's all I want to say, and thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mrs Del Zoppo. Um, now, your question is... Uh, is um, well, it, it, I'll just say that's a simple Yeah, how is Manningham Council going to protect... The homes the, and the businesses homes. in Greenway Street yeah. and Kim Close. Yes. OK, thank you. I will direct that question to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr Corumbus. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and through you. Uh, thank you, Mrs Delgopo, for your question. Um, look, I think at the outset, um, we need to state that this isn't a council project, so it's a state government project. So we technically can't do a lot directly to protect those businesses if, and, the, and the homes if the government uh, and the project proceed as currently proposed. But having said that, Council does acknowledge that, that one of the most devastating impacts of this project is the loss of those businesses and those homes in Manningham and also in uh, the city of uh, Banyol. Um, and the submission that Council's um, going to be considering tonight <coughs> seeks um, um, basically asks the government to ensure that there's a fair and quick process um, to uh, part of the acquisition and compulsory acquisition process and that those residents and businesses get a fair hearing. So our focus is certainly going to be on um, advocating. Um, and the submission also talks about the potential uh, options that we may have working with the state government to look for alternative locations, <coughs> especially for some of the businesses. And that will be our focus. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So, Mrs Del Sopo, we are, as a council, I would reiterate, um, advocating for the people in Greenway Street and Kim Close. So, and as Mr um, Corumbus has said, it's a state government project and they're going to be using the Acquisition Act, the Compulsory Acquisition Act, and a legislative process to acquire this land, which is quite rigorous. Um, but uh, what we're asking the state government to do is to support these people before that formal process starts, to actually start supporting them now and not to wait until the statutory process starts. Thank you. All right, now we have another question and it's from uh, Robin Edwards. Yes? Oh, so Ms Edwards, could you please um, come to the microphone? And similarly, uh, you'll, you have a couple of minutes to introduce your question before asking your question, if you so desire. Um, no, it's really... Mm -hmm. I'm upset about the same things, but yep. my question is, I want to know, can something be done to save that Red River gum? Now, people might think it's terribly important. I just feel that that tree has managed to survive possum attacks. It's managed to survive all the cars and trucks that go past it every day and pollute the air. It's managed to survive all the roadworks that have been through. And for hundreds of years, it's managed to survive. And I think it needs the opportunity to keep on surviving. And when I read that that's likely to go, and people said, but aren't people's businesses and homes more important? Probably they are on a personal human level, but there's something about a tree that's managed to be there for that long. I think it deserves special consideration. And what I want to know is there something council can do to have the plan slightly changed because you know that whatever happens, it's going to end up costing one heck of a lot more money than has been said it's going to cost. I mean, blind Freddie can see that it always costs a lot more. And one of the reasons, if I've got it correctly, is that it's going to cost a lot more if they redirect the tunnel or they lengthen the tunnel or something for the tree to survive. Well, I would like that tree to survive the same as I would like businesses in that area to survive. But I think a 300-year-old-plus tree deserves a special consideration. So that's my question. Yes, Miss Edwards, that's an excellent question, and we certainly want the tree to survive as well. Um, the river red gum lasts up to 800 years. So this 300-year-old tree has another at least 500 years in it. 
and it's going to answer yes. It definitely. Um, we're asking the state government to uh, propose to the people who will tender for the project to do all that they can to save the tree. So to put forward final plans that saves that tree. So that is, because as we were saying, this is a state government project. So oh, it's, I realise that. Yeah, too. that's right. Yeah. So initially we had for informal um, uh, uh, nods that they that the tree would be saved, and we were quite happy with that. But it seems from uh, from the um, EES statement that 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 they are uh, not prioritising uh, saving that tree, and our submission to the advisory panel will be that we want the tree saved and we want the state government to do everything possible to save that tree. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. All right, now, I think that's all the questions. So what we'll do is we will move to um, item number five, which is the Chief Executive Officer Item 5.1, the North East Link Project Environmental Effects Statement, draft submission. Do I have a mover? Councillor Goff. Yes, so do you move that the recommendation be adopted? I move that the recommendation be adopted. Excellent, thank you, Councillor Goff. Do I have a seconder? Councillor McLeish, would the mover like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I rise to speak to this motion because uh, we at local government level are merely submitters to a process of a state government project that in many ways uh, is going to take away a lot from the Manningham community. This project that uh, was devised and came out, this was the, probably the cheapest project of the three uh, options. Uh, and it's looking as if it's going to be probably the most expensive. But there are a number of devastating things that we are making submissions on and we need some answers from the state government and it is hoped that they will be able to uh, work around some cures for our community. We are suffering a lot of losses and I think we're going to uh, make a number of points to see if we can redress a situation. Now, quite honestly, first of all, we're going to lose pretty much our only light industrial business area. We've got some uh, shops that are, or, or factories that are there that are operating in a residential zone, but as soon as they stop operating, it will revert to residential. So we've got a small area down near our depot, but other than that, we're losing those 1,200 jobs that are associated with 100, 100 uh, premises down there and obliterating it. And in many ways, you know, it's going to go and it's not going to help the people there if it becomes that area later, but that is something that I believe in another thing needs to be explored that it actually goes back to some sort of use in that regard. But it is a devastating effect on our uh, economy here in Manningham. There is a huge loss of jobs that come with this that are ongoing jobs in the Manningham community. One of the biggest losses is the loss of flat open space. Now, we have got a lot of bushland in Manningham. We have one of the biggest lots of open space in metropolitan Melbourne. And I would actually go out onto a limb. I don't know, but I think we would have in a, if for a city in, a, in, a, in, in the capital city, we would probably have the biggest lot of open space. <laughs> However, it's bushland, it's hilly, and it is not suitable for infrastructure that we've already got on this open space of ovals, of areas that people can have recreational sporting activities. And it's the lack of that flat land that we are going to lose and we're not losing it for the infrastructure that's already on there, but we're, look, we're losing it for the future of our community with the growth of numbers of people that live in Manningham into the future. We're losing the opportunity to develop further into our own areas. We're losing our own areas. And we need to have suitable, flat areas 
that are located. And there isn't much within Manningham because we can't just take out a hill or take out uh, areas of, of houses to do this. So there are only limited areas and we need the government to ensure that we can expand into areas within Manningham uh, in close proximity. And I, I, that, that is going to be a cost, but we need to really go for that. We're losing an amenity for a lot of people. Now, the, along with this North East Link, we have also got a freeway that is going to have areas that encroach onto housing in Bulleen. In fact, houses will be from me, Madam Mayor, to just the, the Australian flag out there away from a great wall. So their houses will be facing a real wall because that's extending a huge concrete sound wall or even a wooden sound wall, or probably in the future, a graffiti wall that is going to be in front of these people's homes is, is planned. And so the amenity of the people that live in that area is severely going to be affected. And this is happening to people that sort of can't fight back on it. And we need to actually make those points. And if we can get that uh, road moved, a little bit further away to enable... See, it's so close, Madam Mayor, that they, they, they're unable to do vegetation and planting in front of it. So this is a huge impact on those people there. Um, we've got the loss, and I'm glad someone has come in here tonight and talked about the River Redgum that is going to be lost. <coughs> now, this is one that really annoys me because, Madam Mayor, at, I went to a lot of the first meetings that were ever on three years ago with all of this, and at every meeting they're going to, yes, when, once, once the, the site was chosen, yes, we know about that red gum and yes, it is going to be saved. So it's really more than just saying uh, we're going to try and keep it and try and keep it alive. We want to guarantee from the state government that that tree will remain and it will stay alive and that the engineering solution will be made to go around it. Not, it doesn't really matter what it is. That is one of those things. And it is an icon for our community. But there are huge losses for us within this. There are some opportunities for us to develop in other areas. However, if this group do not do that for us, our Manningham community is as a loss of millions and millions. I, it, it'd be tens, if not hundreds, of, 100 million or more, hundreds of million loss. We've got the loss of our economy within the business district there. We've got the loss of the employment. That's going on forever. It's not, not just there. We've got the loss of our, our sporting facilities and the ability to go and grow into the future. So with these huge losses. And with that, Madam Mayor, I'd like to uh, thank uh, all of the people in the council that have been uh, working on this. And indeed, uh, if you look at the document, it is worded in a sort of way because we do have a lot of facts and ammunition behind the statements that we are making. So don't read those statements as if they're the final, that's all we've got to say. There's a lot that is behind that statement that is really important. And why aren't we writing it? Well, we're not writing it because it's sort of like a little court case. And we're going to have expert witnesses and we're going to have QCs, oh, I don't know whether they're QCs, but we're going to have people that have paid a lot of money, solicitors and things like that, that are all debating all of these things. And any topic, that goes to that, vested interests, and we've got the vested interest of the Manningham community, do not want to give away their arguments ahead of that time to allow other people to pick it apart or to do whatever. So we need to be strategic in that form. And when we're reading through it, we're looking at this as these are the bare bones of the structures of the topics we're talking about, but there'll be other information going into our <coughs> arguments at the time to make them. And we can't give those away uh, for a government to, to uh, act on. We need to do that in the proceedings. So, Madam Mayor, I commend the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Would the seconder like to speak? I would, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to touch on the, the points that have been made by my fellow councillor, and that's not because I don't care about those issues. I do, most definitely. I agree with every word that's been said. But in the end, we have a very broad problem here and there is much to be covered in terms of our council's response. And the detail of that response will be, as just been said, will be covered in our sub formal submissions to uh, the EES process. 
what we see before us tonight is the framework of our, of our concerns and issues that we will be addressing through our representatives when we go into that formal process. The concerns I have, I'd like to address this evening are actually about the impact on our sporting facilities. Uh, I'm, I'd have to say I'm extremely disappointed with the content of the EES documents that I've seen so far. You will see the, the sporting facilities in Burundurra mentioned and identified quite clearly. Swim centre, golf course, tennis centre, very clearly identified in the EES. And when it comes to the sporting precincts of Manningham, the most significant impact, those precincts aren't really named. It's described as Bulleen Park. There will be a minor impact on Bulleen Park. I'm afraid the impact isn't minor at all. It's catastrophic. An entire football oval, freeway the freeway tunnel exits in the middle of the football oval used by the Yarra Valley Junior Football League. It will isolate the club rooms, meeting rooms and grandstands of that facility, setting it right next to a tunnel entrance and a car park that won't actually be next to the football ground anymore. We have clubs such as the Templestowe United Soccer Club, the Bulleen Lions Soccer Club, the Bulleen Templestowe Football Club, the Yarraleen Clicket Club, the Marcelin Old Boys Football Club, the Doncaster Aero Modellers, the Yarra Bowmen. All of these organisations used Bulleen Park and every one of them is going to be impacted through the 10 year program of construction and demolition of some or all of their facilities. We have hectares of flat open space currently used by some of those sporting clubs and we are going to lose that space. And right now, the project boundaries are so carefully framed that the land that, land that does exist elsewhere in the precinct, that is crown land, that the government has control over, is not being considered for repla as replacement land. It's outside <coughs> the scope of the project, not considered by the North East Link Authority, and Manningham residents are going to be gypped in the middle of all of this because we have millions of dollars of public facilities that have been carefully constructed over decades that are put at risk by their pro this project and we have no guarantees those similar facilities will be reconstructed. We don't just want compensation in the form of a facility that looks like our 30 year old facility down there. We don't want like for like. If you are going to destroy the functioning of a community facility, then you have to replace it with an equivalent new facility. We can't just go to our community and say, oh, we'll stack up our rates and raise some more money to build a new facility. We don't have that luxury. Why? Because our rates are controlled by the government. We can't just reach into the hip pocket of the ratepayers, pull out a few million and build a new sporting club. It's the responsibility of the North East Link project that's the government and the North East Link Authority combined to replace our existing sporting facilities to give us back the flat land that we are losing, that we had for expansion of sports such as soccer, and make sure that our community is compensated for the damage that's going to be wreaked upon our community facilities. Now, Councillor McLeish, you've run out of time. Can I have a motion? Yes, motion to extend time. Yep. Do I have a seconder? All those in favour, motion carried. Continue. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Now, I, I know there's a terrible impact on the businesses in the Bulleen Precinct. They're going to lose their businesses, their livelihood, their lifelong investment for many of these small businesses, their primary asset. For many of them, it's their retirement asset. They're now frozen in time. They're going to lose the land they own. In fact, we as a council is going to lose land outside of the parkland. There is land in the Bullin Precinct, blocks of land that we as a council own. We will lose those blocks of land, the government will take them from us and we won't even get compensation. Unlike the, the small businesses, council will not even get compensated and that means our community is going to lose millions of dollars of assets just in plots of land which we could have developed, could have sold. We're going to lose it to this project. We're going to lose acres of more parkland along the Coonung Creek, along the Eastern Freeway. The Eastern Freeway is going to be massively expanded into our parklands. Great disruption to the Coonung Creek. More than a kilometre of the creek will be put into concrete pipes beneath the freeway complex, right next to its junction with the Yarra River. 
a very, very sensitive part of any creek because that's where you get uh, the, the native fauna comes through the, from the river up the creek for spawning purposes. It's going to be a massive disruption. No one knows the, what impact that will have on, that, on the ecosystem of that creek as that, that creek is put into concrete pipes. We're going to have a massive disruption to all of the road network through Bulleen and all the way along the Eastern Freeway Corridor. All of our residents are going to pay the price for that disruption. It's incumbent upon the government to make sure that the strategy that they, that they use to implement this project seeks to minimise the harm on our community both during the construction and afterwards. It's simply not good enough to propose putting up a sound wall when the road is built. What about the poor residents who are going to be living next to this construction site for years as this occurs? What are they going to do about actually putting up... Are they going to do something about putting up the sound walls at the start of the project rather than at the end? Well, are we going to get some noise barriers to, to try and at least in some way protect the residents along the Eastern Freeway and the Bulleen Road complex from damage from this particular freeway construction? Ladies and gentlemen, we could go on for hours about this particular project. I don't think it's going to serve our community particularly well if we do. I ask my fellow councillors to support the proposal that's been carefully crafted by the officers in con consultation with the, the councillors, and I look forward to them fighting tooth and nail on behalf of our community in the EES submission process. Thank you, councillor. Are there any speakers against the motion? Would any other councillors like to speak? Councillor Haynes. Thank you, thank you. I don't have much to say beyond that, and I'm very grateful that the officers have been working well with this, um, but I am going to say I attended their meeting last week and the maps that the council and the community have been given are somewhat, um, let's just say I was very unimpressed with the, uh, the, the maps that were about the eastern freeway walls and the barriers to do with the sound barriers. The maps were definitely not detailed enough. There was some quite considerable faults that I um, happen to see as for someone that knows that freeway quite well and those barriers and, um, and their proposals to what they're going to put up are very unimpressive. So I'm thankful that, um, and they're unacceptable, so I'm thankful that our council is going to fight on behalf of all the residents right from Bulleen Road right through to Springvale Road. Um, the Eastern Freeway seems to have not even been factored in as far as funds go, so this is definitely going down the road of being one of the most expensive roads to be built. Um, and the state government, uh, I, I think, needs to be called out on what it's trying to do to so many residents, not only the Bulleen um, Business Park and our sporting facilities. Uh, you know, they knew if they knew years ago they were going to do this, they probably should have bought the uh, golf course, the Doncaster Golf Course, instead of Mervac doing it and turning that into some of our sporting facilities and saying, we're going to put that aside because we know you're going to need it in the future. But no, they won't do that for us. Um, they, they're all worried about their own little <coughs> drive and their own little reasons. And there are going to be hundreds of people along that freeway that are going to be affected. And I know the bullying tree and the bullying businesses and the livelihoods of many people are going to be affected, but also the amenity. And um, I, I'm hoping that we can... My view is that they actually put the freeway on... The, send it more south. Just send those extra lanes south instead of sending them north. And there is room there. Why are they saving Burundara and those other areas and, and not moving more of those lanes south? I don't know. I don't understand it. I'm glad we've got lawyers that are going to ask those questions uh, much more articulate than me. And I'm thankful that we've got people that are going to act and, and do all we can to try and help the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Chen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And when, when the EAS report released uh, several weeks ago and our officers worked really, really hard to read through the uh, more than 14,000 pages of the report, they are very technical and they need to go through every single pages to find out the te te uh, technical details in order to make the right submissions. And, um, and luckily they have done their homeworks, they prepared the submissions and uh, this is time we go out for the public to introduce, that's why we have the public information session and to uh, 
to advise our communities what we have done and also encourage our community to help them to make their own submissions. And council has done their technical part and, and we have the professional employed <coughs> and also solicitors, solicitors and barristers employed to argue for our community for the technical part. And we have been assured by the Northeast League there will be no lead loss. And I think that we need to stick to the principle and we would not tolerate for any uh, land for land because they probably will use the hilly land for our flat land. So there has to be quantified and I have my true belief, I'm the true believer that our officers and our professional barristers and solicitors will address uh, that issue. But there are only three days left until the, the submission is closed. So I just ask our community to provide your own submissions and to provide your personal stories and how they impact to your personal life. Because as a, from a council point of view, we can only address the technical issues. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Accordingly. Uh, Madam Mayor, I've got a question. You have a question, yes. Madam Mayor, I, I, I'm wanting to ask a question as uh, uh, if people are watching this and if people in the community uh, have concerns about amenity and, and things at the same, is there an opportunity for them to actually make a submission and is there an ability to do that and the closing time for that? I'm just wondering if there's still an ability for our community to get involved on issues that are important to them and whether whether uh, that is... is uh, so to hear yes. if we can get that message out, I don't yes. know. Yes, there certainly is still an opportunity to be heard by making a submission. The closing time and date is the is 5 p.m. this Friday, the 7th of February, and submissions can be made June. June. Oh yes, 7th of June. And submissions can be made online by going to the Northeast Link Project website. Um, and there's no set format for the submission. It can just be a couple of paragraphs, your personal story, and you can be elect to appear before the panel if you wish, but you don't have to either. So you can simply put in your personal account um, of, um, of how it's going to affect you and it will be read by the experts sitting on the panel. The website's called Engage Victoria. Thank you, Councillor Goff, for that excellent question. As that is the end of the debate, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. And, um, and as there are no further items on the agenda, I will close the meeting. Thank you.